Headphones on? Hello everyone, welcome to this WideX podcast. My name is Craig Spencer. I'm the audiology team lead for WideX in Canada. And today I'm joined by my longtime colleague and senior audiologist, Stephen Pugsley. So welcome Stephen. Thank you, Craig. And today the topic of conversation is some new tinnitus resources. You got it, Craig. Okay. So WideX has introduced some new resources this fall. Okay. And are they kind of broken up into a few categories? Yes, so I would break them up into client resources, so resources for the patient, mm -hmm. and professional resources, so prof resources for the clinician or the hearing care professional. Okay, well, why don't we talk about some of the patient uh, resources? Sure, so let's start with that. So the, the first one is managing my tinnitus. So it's a nice little brochure that gives patients clear, concise, accurate information on what is tinnitus, what are the causes of tinnitus, how to manage tinnitus. It covers, in brief, introducing the WIDEX Zen and sound relaxed tones, talks about the importance of relaxation and sleep mm -hmm. because many tinnitus patients have stress issues where relaxation exercises are going to come in handy. Okay. And um, the importance of sleep because many tinnitus patients do have sleep issues as well. So it's kind of general information related to tinnitus management. You've got it. Uh, what about stuff specifically related to WIDEX and Zen therapy? And that's this other little shorter brochure. So it talks about why sound should be used in tinnitus management. It talks about the science behind Zen and sound relax. That it's not just a hearing aid that can produce music. These stimuli have actually been developed specifically for tinnitus management and talks about the science behind it, which I think is really good. Mm -hmm. It is, I think we, we both know that when a patient understands how this process is supposed to work and why we're providing these additional stimuli, they, the outcomes really are, are better in the long run. You've got way. it. Instead of just turning a sound on in a hearing aid, sure. you're actually explaining to the patient why you're doing it and you can give them a take-home brochure sure. so that they have it in case they're wondering or they need to explain to somebody else for sure what's actually happening for sure okay now what about what we have to offer for hcps yeah so the first one is a short seven page guide that introduces wide extent therapy talks about the four components of counseling amplification, zen and sound relax, and relaxation, which includes that sleep component that I mentioned. It briefly talks about the five steps that are involved in wide extent therapy. So the intake process, the treatment plan, um, delivering the components in an individualized way, depending upon what the patient actually needs. Mm -hmm. Talks about follow-up, mm -hmm. and then talks about verifying the results. So it's like an overview yeah, it's of kind wide extent therapy. Like a wide extent therapy quick guide for HCPs. You've got it. In a way. So that they can decide, is this something that I want to learn more about? Or is this just something that I need to know exists maybe? Okay. The five easy steps is the manual. So this is 16 pages long. Um, it goes in detail over each of the five steps. So it talks about the importance of intake and making sure that you have a tinnitus focused case history, that you um, give subjective questionnaires. It talks about what audiological tests to do. It talks about how you figure out the treatment plan. What components of wide extent therapy does the patient need? Uh, and then how do you deliver those components, which is step three, so utilizing those components. Mm -hmm. It talks about how we assess progress and talks about the importance of follow-up, what we recommend for a follow-up schedule, and how you can verify um, the results and how progress is 
going on from appointment to appointment. That's awesome. Um, now, in terms of counseling, are there any specific tools that are helpful for HCPs in that counseling process? Yes. So, counseling in wide extent therapy has three parts. We have instructional based counseling, which is where you're going to be giving information about tinnitus, hearing loss, the relationship between hearing loss and tinnitus, mechanisms and what's happening in the brain. There's adjustment based counseling where the clinician is diving deeper into the patient's thought processes. And then there is cognitive behavioral intervention, which is going into in-depth counseling with the patient. Now, the first two types, instructional and adjustment-based counseling, are covered in a new counseling flip chart. I equate it to a tool that speech pathologists use. So when speech pathologists are assessing, whether it's a child or an adult, assessing their function, they have a tool like this, where there's one side which is facing the patient, and then on the other side, there's information for the clinician. Well, this is the tinnitus tool that covers adjustment-based counseling and instructional-based counseling for the clinician. So as they're going through the different steps of instructional-based counseling, as they're going through the steps of instructional counseling, the clinician has one side which is giving basic information for the patient, right. and then on the clinician side, they are going to know how they should be talking about everything. Awesome. Now, cognitive behavioral intervention has its own flip chart now. Okay. And we are going to have a, a separate podcast that talks about cognitive behavioral intervention in more detail. Specifically. But if the clinician is interested in cognitive behavioral intervention until that podcast comes out, there is CBI information in the Five Easy Steps Manual. Got it. Now, I think you did mention also the importance of charting progress as part of the tinnitus management process. Correct. So I understand we have some new resources to help in that process yeah. as well. So one of them, I won't say is new, okay. but it's a reminder, mm -hmm. um, and it is the tinnitus functional index. So the tinnitus functional index, the clinician's going to give to the patient, of course, at the beginning of the process, where they're assessing the patient for the first time, mm -hmm. but they are going to give the tinnitus functional index at every appointment. And the reason why is that we know that a 13 point change in the TFI score is statistically significant. Okay. And there are some patients who need that quantitative number mm -hmm. to know that they are actually progressing. So that's the TFI. The new tools we have are actually from the Ida Institute. Um, so we have the tinnitus thermometer. So like the tinnitus functional index, the tinnitus thermometer is done at every appointment. And the tinnitus thermometer is, as you can see here on the front, um, a way of gauging progress. So what we would expect that the patient at the beginning of the process is going to be higher up in the red, where you have the unhappy face, and then has progress is progressing, has the sessions progress, what we would expect is that we are going down on the thermometer into lower mm -hmm. um, numbers and where we have a positive happy outcome, face. a happy face, you've got it. Yeah. And on the back, there's a place for each appointment. So the tinnitus thermometer um, process is there's um, four questions um, and what you do is that you go through each question with the patient at each um, appointment and then you can chart right on the back okay. what the progress is. Very nice. The last new tool that we have is the tinnitus forecast and it too is from the Ida Institute. So it is showing the typical progress in a tinnitus management session. Tinnitus management program is probably the best thing. And so during the tinnitus management process, what we are going to be doing with the patient is taking them from a point of where the tinnitus is having a negative impact, where they're experiencing a lot of tinnitus distress, that unhappy face, and we're going to move them over the process into a point where their tinnitus distress is lower and the impact of tinnitus on their life is less negative. But during that process, it's normal 
to have peaks and valleys. And this is a reminder for the patients not to dwell on the individual valleys or mm -hmm. peaks. Mm -hmm. What's important is the process. Right. So we don't want people to focus on one thing or the other. Right, right. It's that progress. You don't want to focus especially on those valleys. That's right, for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking us through those new resources. I'd like to thank our audience for joining us today. And we look forward to you attending a future WideX podcast. Bye for now. Take care.